long time ago. I've played your la you've played your last song, Hoi Kello. <laughs> and there won't be any encores. And we are back. So last time... We set up to return to rescuing the Yamato. I also got a bunch of cash which we need to spend. Um, or not need to, but would like to spend. Let's level up some of these Gundams here. And other mobile, other basic level mobile suits. Make them less squishy. Because armoring them isn't quite as viable an option. Suborders! Let's level some people up. Okay. Unfortunately, the guide I'm use, using is kind of know where the branching paths are, so I can send set up uh, voting. Doesn't have much useful information when it comes to um, who your opponents are. Because if I knew, had a good idea of who I was fighting, would help give me an idea of, okay, who am I... of, uh... what I need, of what we're about to be more suitable for what fights. Alright, let's... There we go, Judo! You're actually almost leveled up. You're almost leveled up. Actually, yeah, let's do let's go by who's ready next. Who's gonna level up soonest? No, I don't want to keep Tubia, Tobia. Hallelujah, I can kinda have go. Uh You know what, let's have Judo go. I got a Tobia because his mobile suit's very hard to hit. It can hold it on pretty well. That's a little Salia. Yeah, they require 500 XP. That basically ends up, that's a full level up. Um. Pack points are good. Belt, Lottie, Toby, and Vivian are also doing pretty well in terms of getting close to high level scores. Okay, and they all leveled up. Great. And let's do the next map. I'm assuming if I, because I include them, I, they won't be available for the next next mission. Let's actually find this out. All right. It appears that Twitha de, Twitha de Denon has departed safely. So it is linked up, yeah, left the atmosphere and linked up with the Nondisco then. We've also received word that the item was safely delivered to the Nondisco. 
plus the detect and left the atmosphere. Man, I am really getting Sequest DSV Season 2 vibes here. Well, Captain Ruri has set his sights on the Amar Amaratsu, but can we really leave? Man, put on a shirt. Thanks to personnel changes, repairs to the Titan are on go. My god, what, like... Also, have you checked out my packs lately? The Elder Senpuji is none too happy about that. Explain yourself, President! Where do you get off having the submarine's repairs done at Nergal? It's been far too long, but anger is only going to leave, only going to give you wrinkles. Not if my natto has anything to say about it, but answer my question, or I'll shave that beautiful mane of yours down to nothing. Well, you deal in rail, and I deal in ships. They're completely different, are they not? You've got a point. It's just that I really wanted to meet Tessa. That's what I thought. But you've got Captain Hoshino, don't you? You're a creepy person, Yujiro. I don't care if it's the Electron Fairy or Tessa. I want them all to myself. You are a creepy man. They're both as bright as they are beautiful. Either would make a fine wife for Maito. You are both a, you are a doting parent and a dumb old man. That is a valid sentiment. If you keep this up, the reputations of the former Celestial Being members are going to be in shambles. Eh? You really thought I didn't know? I guess that's why you don't take don't take me seriously. You left such a being when you heard about some Gundam causing problems. You learned about credit for establishing a worldwide railway network less ravaging, less susceptible to the ravages of war after that. That was a long time ago. I don't remember how how this all how all that ended for my son and his wife. Sorry I brought it up. This is where not this is where not having a change of facial expressions causes problems because it since it since Akatsuki's facial expression hasn't changed, it's not clear whether he's being serious about about being remorseful for bringing it up, or he's just messing. But that's why I want more than anything for my grandson Maito to be happy. I won't let anyone get in the way of that. It looks like this is going to take a while. Is the new model really that much behind schedule? I'm afraid so. It would take a month, even if we rushed it. But I think that everyone on Nodisco B will do just fine on their own. Especially since they're going to their, the, since their objective is to recapture a capital ship capable of interstellar travel. Something that no one in this universe has. It's not about whether you think they can win. Thanks for talking to the old man for us. My relationship with Sinpuji goes back to my parents. It's not like I can flat out refuse. The two top young leaders seem to be moving in completely opposite directions. The young Sinpuji hero can keep at it. I want to see how far his youth can take it. Times have changed, I suppose. As they sure have. As have Tenkawa and I. It's sad. That name sounds familiar from Nondisco. It's been a while. I, I need to rewatch Nondisco. I really need to rewatch Nondisco. Indeed. Remember the realist. And that's why I think Nergal needs to sell itself with a more sensational win if it's going to get any credit. But it really depends on whether the nice guy uses the present for giving him. Crimson Troop is already helping the Martian successors, after all. At the weight they're growing in power, even our company may be at risk. There's more to it than that. What do you mean? And apologies for slipping around with uh, Prospector's voice. Becoming the top of Nurgle teaches you a few things about how this world is structured. Unlike the Senpuji concern, our company gets involved in seedier affairs. And that leads me to my conclusion. If we let them have their way, their vile stench is bound to spread. See. I think the only way to fix where we find ourselves is to destroy the world and start over. Wait, what? Are you talking world domination? Aren't you listening? I told you I'm a realist. And that's why I'll take a realistic approach. Trickery no hero would think to employ. Where did you get those unusual clothes, by the way? Well, it's a suit jacket with no shirt. Not a suit jacket and t-shirt. 
like you see in some of some millennials these days. Not a suit jacket and hoodie. We're not going for the um, how was his face from Microsoft look. No, no, no. It is a suit jacket with no shirt, bare chested, situationing it. Or to be Amber Crombie and fitching it. I don't know. But the point is, it's it, it's not unusual clothes. It's unusual lack of clothes. It's nice, huh? I keep it around for special occasions. It's a suit jacket. It's a pretty standard suit jacket design. Maybe there needs to be an adjustment in the cut for the shoulders. I don't know. But it's a suit jacket. There's nothing unusual about the suit jacket. Maybe the fact that it's got the red trim around the edges of the collars, but otherwise it's a pretty standard suit jacket. It's the lack of shirt that makes it unusual. I'm normally not a person to criticize fashion, but really you guys, I was really surprised to hear that Tuatha Dé Danann could navigate space. Me too, considering that in the Full Metal Panic anime series, it's a submarine, and that's all it is. I mean, it's a submarine that's a mech carrier, but it's not a—it's not capable of turning into a helicarrier or anything like that. In our world, battles take place in both atmospheric and non-atmospheric conditions, and by our world, I mean the—I mean the mashup. Full Metal Panic Gundam universe that you came from, not the actual Full Metal Panic universe where the robot, where everything is in atmosphere. At no point is any of the robots going into space. Like, it's more grounded than Bubblegum Crisis, which has one of the Bubblegum Crisis series ending with a protagonist surfing a satellite through atmospheric re-entry in their powered armor. Danon was originally designed, initially designed to be a submarine and then later mod modded for spaceflight. Although, actually, I do kind of get what they're going for here, brief rewind, because Nishika Nishizawa, uh, the guy who executive produced Yamato, did a follow-up series called Blue Nova, which instead of having it be a, uh, a battleship going out into space it's uh, or using the design of a conventional wet navy battleship for going out into space it was a submarine but because it originally couldn't be used in space it takes a lot of prep to get it up there battleship building is where Nergal excels we were right to ask him to handle this Tessa might be inclined to disagree though is it because of President Akatsuki? Yeah, more or less. According to Commander Mardukas, he'll come up with any and every reason to ask you on dates and doesn't take rejection lightly. Ah. Okay. Well, at least that's as far as he's going. He's just uncomfortably aggressive and not, you know, actually rapey. He's the same as ever, I see. But at least it's allowed us to get into outer space. Here, I can really appreciate just how blue the Earth really is. You said it. It's hard not to... Hard to see... It's hard. It's not hard to see why it's called the Water Star. Who calls it that? The blue marble? Sure. The Water Star? Is that a Japanese-specific term? I'm glad that Twethity Danon gave me a chance to see the deep blue seas. Tessa, Twethity Danon has an attempt to return strategic value to the sea and other environments that have been all but abandoned by humankind. There was a part of me that really wants to just drop the clip of the opening credit spiel from um, season one of Sequest DSV here. The individual who launched the project maybe even considered the past in its conception. You might be right about that. I heard the seas are red in Judo and Mithril's worlds. It seems like it seems like this makes it hard to dig to dig any deeper. Should 
Judices are red in Judos and Mithril's worlds. So that would mean that the Gamelons had started their um, Earth Bio modification. Do, 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 do. But seriously, you really think the paramail paramail can work in space? Well, you will have to change your outfits to something that is an actual full-on spacesuit when you're flying the robots. And this will particularly cause a problem with um <laughs> with uh Angie's special attack thing where she like opens fire on the or she like opens the cockpit and opens fire on the target with an assault rifle while the robot also opens fire on it with its rifle because if you're wearing that midriff bearing and cleavage exposing outfit in space you're going to have a bad time of it no doubt about it said Puji Heavy Industries been working tirelessly to make sure the cockpits are airtight also, you should probably wear normal suits or some other space suit when you're in space. I realize Shara's novel and stuff don't wear, this is don't always wear space suits in their cockpit, but that's also peak. They're also new types and they're weird. And even then, they don't go without space suits all the time. You should wear space suits. Though I heard most of the work was done by contra subcontractors. Also, if you want to preserve the cheesecake aspect of the spacesuits, I'm pretty sure there'll probably be some spacesuits from the Not Yamato that will be sufficiently form-fitting. Are you sure it's going to be okay? I've heard that the smaller workshops are good, that, they've con that they're connected to old Nidusco members. But what if we're attacked and holes open up in the cockpit? We'll be dead before we know what hit us. Oh no! Hilda, please watch what you say. Well, that's the truth, ain't it? It's, but it's not like it's limited to space battles, either. You've seen what happened when you uh, when you fight against dragons in unarmored cockpits. Now that I think about it, you're right. But nothing feels better than the wind while in flight. Well, the story is that those at the top don't place much value on the lives of us Normas. You realize that almost everyone on this ship is Normas, you... You know, it's okay if you don't want to be a part of this upcoming operation. Well, this is our valiant captain. You and the first paramail squadron have been participating in operations, having been employed by Celestial Being. However, I'm sure your contract is the really way to avoid review certain orders. We understand this have being a mercenary company. <clears throat> oh, you don't say. I guess that settles it then. We're going to sit here in the observation lounge with popcorn and watch. I'm in. Angelese? Hilda, you said those at the top don't place much value on our lives. Those at the top here clearly do. What of it? I don't know about how others feel about that, but I do place a lot of value on my life. And I swore that's why I swore to survive and fight no matter what. Angie. And and you'll and you know what that also means. If none of you show up, all the rewards are as good as mine. Uh, hold on a second. That's not fair. Then let's fight together without anyone absent. Captain Tesseron is right. You have to band together if we hope to return to Arsenal alive. Or you could go to another universe where Normas are, for lack of a better term, normal and not subject to disintegration, not disintegration, but discrimination, and just chill there. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. Thank you very much, so much, Captain Tessa Rosa. Your words were exactly what Salia needed. Everyone is ner everybody's nervous. Fight together, and we survive together. You're so kind, Captain Tessa. I wish you could replace Jill and our commander. We can start replacing the grumpy Salia as captain of our squadron. So Tessa would be wearing your rider suits. I can get behind that. Who the hell asked you anyway? And actually, no, you shouldn't be wearing those rider suits in the fighter cockpit. In, in a mobile suit cockpit in space. You should be wearing a space suit. Not like a mobile suit Gundam normal suit or something. 
you know, in case your cockpit gets breached. Relax. They seem relaxed. I'm sure she was trying to ease their tension. When fighting in space, it's zero G and enemies are coming from all directions. And your response to that dictates whether you live or die. And don't you forget it, Mido. Got it. Thank you, Tetsuya. Can I have a minute, Tetsuya? What is it, Judo? You know of the Mazinger Z? Or, for those of you playing, watching up, up overseas, the Mazinger Z? I don't, but its name sounds like greats. There you have it. It's just a coincidence. But like in the Gona Guy of like the Mazinger universe, Great Mazinger and Mazinger Z both exist in the same universe. Uh, maybe, but Tatsuya lost his memory, so maybe he's just forgotten. Hmm, I guess you've got a point. Gundam exists in both Tobia worlds and Tobia's world in this one. Mazinger may be no different. That's another possibility. I mean. Like, be like having a, a horde of infinitely re, uh, looping timelines uh, based around a, the eternal conflict between Devil Man and Lucifer, and all with various iterations on each other. Some of them crossing over with other franchises, such as such as Cutie Honey or Mazinger or various other things. I suppose that Mazinger Z is a robot from your world, then. I'm busy with a mission right now, but tell me more when things quiet down. Okay, sure. The sea is all as cool as a cucumber. It, all, it never ceases to amaze me. You never know, Zo. It's it's possible that he'll be a, be a completely different person with, with, his mes, with his memory back. Perhaps it proves surprisingly playful. I just can't imagine that. Hmm. What? What is it, Nine? Never mind. It's nothing. So you think that Tetsuya is hiding something? Yes. There was a faint reaction on Tetsuya's face when the Mazinger Z was mentioned. I'm actually starting to wonder whether or not he actually lost his memory. A little oh, too overly robotic a language, sorry. I see. Please instruct me how to proceed, sis. For starters, tell no one what you just told me. Why not? We should report to Captain Furry or Shimuraki to have him monitored or otherwise dealt with. Dealt with? Question. Or confined if need be. Or thrown out an airlock with no spacesuit if need be. I don't think that'll be necessary. We can at least tell he's not the enemy. Is that isn't that enough? If you start, if you continue to watch things unfold, you'll start questioning anything, everything. I can't comprehend such illogical thinking. Everyone has their reasons, and Tetsuya came alone from his world. Could we please hold off a little longer? We're in the middle of an important mission, we should quell any and all concerns if it means a slight reduction in risk. Risk, you say? Do you think Tetsuya would betray us? The worst possibilities can't be dismissed. You can't treat a comrade who risked his life for you in battle like that. Can you trust people who lie? Tell me this, Nine. Have you ever kept a secret from me? Is it true that you were given a human form for the sake of communication? Are you implying that I lied? I mean, you weren't communicating with anyone in this world until you reunited with me now, were you? Um... Isn't there some other reason you were given human form? Do you really think AI can lie? You're much more than AI to me. Oh. And we're under attack. What is it? An attack from outside. But we heard nothing about incoming enemies. Pardon. But we heard nothing about incoming enemies. If our adversary has embarked the successors, they're able to move long distances in seconds. Bosun jumps. Yep. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.